I've been asked a couple of times to make a more technical video of the machines that I fix and repair and show. This lever's rich I recently got. I've got a video just posted just before this one of the first time being powered up and I thought it would make, make an interesting video if I showed how I went around fixing and getting this machine working. So here we go. This machine currently has no sound on it and one of the first things I noticed if I turn on the low tension and the high tension the neon light flashes on and flashes off. Now there is a good reason for this. This is because the voltage comes up to where it should be and then rapidly decreases. So if I put a probe on to this neon which is more or less mains operated 11 volts, so you can see it's discharging capacitor. If I turn it on, 140, 160, and then it drops down to 70. Not enough to keep the neon lit. If we have a look at the scope here, it also gives us an indication of what actually is happening. We can see a peak of the voltage and then a rapid decline. So we can see there that the HT is coming up and then something's pulling it right down again. So where to start? Normally if an engineer was fixing a machine like this, the first thing they'd do is start fault finding trying to find out which capacitor was the one causing the issue, if a capacitor at all. But because this machine has notoriously got a lot of bad capacitors in it, the simplest thing to start doing is to take them all out by the electrolytics. Uh, the electrolytics usually are all right. Um, I have had some of them go, but um, for now we'll just assume that electrolytics are okay. So let's begin. These are the capacitors. I'm going to first of all replace this one. Now this one says here 0.02 UF, U standing for micro, plus or minus 20%. And that's quite important, that, because you can't get a 0.02 UF capacitor anymore. You can, but they tend to be a bit expensive. So what I'm going to do is replace it with a 22 nanofarad capacitor, or 0.022. Now, it is a different value, but most of these circuits, circuits are based with having a 20% tolerance anyway. So it doesn't really matter. easy as that. Then we're going to put the new one in its place. With Levers Rich and many other manufacturers they always put the components the same way around so the writing is the same way around. Levers Rich were a stickler for quality and um, they were also quite keen to keep everything inside looking as neat and tidy as possible. In fact, one of the engineer's stories tells where he was supposed to be cable tying these cables, which you can't see off camera, um, cable tying cables up so that the um, they were the knots were exactly one inch apart. And because they weren't, his supervisor cut them all off and asked him to start all over again. It's quite a tedious job. That's one side in. The other side in. So keeping the text the same way around and keeping the component as centralised to the circuit board as possible. There is another 2-2 here, or 0 0.02, a little bit more awkward underneath the load of cables. But bear in mind this is a component that's not worth salvaging. So we can cut the legs off to make it a little bit easier to get into. Remembering that it's connected to this green wire and the ground. Now you might have noticed I've bent the legs. So it fits into place nicely.
although this is a part of the circuitry you won't really see, it's always nice to have a bit of um, nice looking quality involved. I mean, of course, you can just smack it in on top, or you could just um, wire it in. Uh, it just look untidy. Uh, so I try and make it look as tidy as possible. So now, with a handful of the capacitors replaced, obviously not going to show um, me changing every single one of them. We now have another look at the meter reading on the scope, and we can see here that we have a voltage scale going down slowly. Uh, this is because I have switched the machine on. If I do it again, we can see now it's completely off the scale, which means we have HT. We now have a bright in the on. And although it's staying on longer, it isn't staying on all the time. We see there it's just gone out, the voltage has just dropped just below um, the amount it needs required to run. So there's obviously still an issue there. But if I check the voltages now, hundred and forty seven volts, which is where it should be, and we just see it there dropping now to hundred and forty one. 140. You can see it's going down slightly and slowly, but it isn't 60 volts like it was before. So, replacing a handful of capacitors in the power supply. I haven't bothered to check which one's faulty, but I know at least one or more of those is actually faulty. So now the next step will be to open up the amplifier and do the same treatment of replacing all the non-electrolytic capacitors. So here is the oscillator. Now there's one, two, three capacitors on this one that need to be replaced. As mentioned, the electrolytics are usually okay. It's not a rule of thumb that they're always okay, but usually. Um, once the, uh, the non-electrolytics have been replaced, if you're still having problems, then that's the time to do the proper fault finding. Having said that most electrolytics will be fine, this one here, an eight microfarad electrolytic, it's by the same company as the known ones I'm having issues with. So out of precaution, I'm going to replace that with a modern electrolytic. Now I mentioned this word electrolytic and non-electrolytic. The difference is non-electrolytics, although this one has a colour code either side of red and black, these have no pol polarity. What they do have, as I mentioned, they've got a black end and a red end. And this is because the black end is connected to the shell of the capacitor and the red end isn't. On an electrolytic, which has different kind of, usually these tags are on these old style ones, usually are sort of like um, bonded, as in um, riveted. But you have a black side and a red side, and the red side is positive. And on this one, you can probably see from the video there that it's actually quite mucky and it looks like as if it may have leaked. So now, although we can't hear it because it's going through the amplifier and the amplifier isn't kicking any sound out, but we can see from the scope there that we have an oscillator working. Need a bit of a clean, but it is working. So now it's time to do the main amplifier. I couldn't help but notice this valve here, EF86. Now, it looks like the rest, except the top is clearer. And I don't know if you can see in this picture, but this side of the valve at the top here is actually kind of white. This usually indicates that the valve is actually faulty. So if we have a look here, you can see that it's actually quite white. What that is, is that air has got into that valve, and it's most probably got a crack somewhere. I can't see it, I don't know whether or not that looks like a mould, but this valve is most likely faulty. And 
although I can test this on a AVO valve tester, there is probably not much point. Same with this one. It's completely clear in the top, which is unusual, but you can see a flex of white in there. Sometimes the gases are at the bottom of the valve, not often on these kind of valves. Um, the black substance, as mentioned, is to help uh, remove any kind of other gases in that that you don't need. And if this uh, material should uh, come in contact with air, usually it turns white. But in the interest for this video, I will demonstrate a testing of a valve. We have a known good one in the system. I'm going to check uh, for short circuit. Sorry for for short circuits. The heat is nice and short. Check the insulation, which should be greater than 25 mega ohms, and we we'll go to a test. According to this um, uh, test results of the AVO, this dial set to 10, so scale 1 to 10 in the top there instead of 1 in the 100, this needle should be registering about 3. So it shows an incredibly good uh, output. And this meter over here saying it should be reading 2.3, and it's well within the good range. Let's compare that. against one of these white valves. So uh, continuity check fine, heater uh, continuity check fine, heater resistance, sorry, um, uh, insulation greater than 25 mega ohms. Let's go to test. Now bearing in mind it is a valve and it will require to warm up. But as we can see there, the needles haven't moved. And the other one with just a tiniest of flick of white in it. Need to check, insulation check and test. Give it a minute to warm up. You can see there, it's absolutely, I mean this meter's just gone up by a tiny fraction. There really isn't anything there. Compare that against, again, a good valve. I mean I'll just go straight to test because we already know it works. gives you an idea on how long the needles uh, take to react as we see there it's a perfect valve it most likely probably a brand new valve that's never been used ever now here comes the challenge of replacing all these non electrolytics some of these look like they've already been done for example this isn't a standardized one but I'm going to replace it anyway, just in case. It's worrying when you find a loose cable like this one. You wonder where it should go to. Should it go to this pin? Should it go to that pin? Should it go to one behind it? But when you look a little bit closer to it, you can see that there's only two places it can go, and the chances are it's off this resistor. So. There's two reasons for this to have come off. One is because an engineer has taken it off and is trying to fault find or it's come loose. So for now, I'm gonna make a mental note of that wire. And I'm just gonna solder him back on to there. So there we go. All the non electrolytics have been replaced. However, as mentioned before, these silver ones here are also TCCs, and normally I'd replace them, but 
in this instance I don't have any 25 microfarad capacitors. Now it's safe to assume that you've got to play with space like as before but the best possible capacitor to use in this scenario will probably be a 27 rather than a 22. So I'll order some 27 in um, and uh, replace those at some point. So these capacitors aren't standard ones to the levers rich. These have most likely been replaced by an engineer who's gone through and fault finded the, the faulty ones and replaced them. Not all of these will be faulty, but what I'm doing is I'm preventing a future issue from occurring by replacing the lot. So after replacing the capacitors, what's different? I'll turn the machine on, the low tension and the high tension. Straight away we notice the neon light is on and it's not going out. You can't really hear it in the video but the uh, DC to DC converter or switch mode power supply uh, powered up straight away. The last time, the first time I plugged it in, if you looked at one of my previous videos, it took a while, it took about 15 seconds to get to the pitch to where it was stabilised. So, do we have sound? We do. That's just a test tape, that's not actually the machine. We'll turn off the loudspeaker. Turn that meter up so we can see there we're getting deflection. Don't think we're getting any frequency at the moment from the oscillator. Not quite sure what I need to be selecting for that. That I later on found out isn't the oscillator. That is showing some sort of an issue, that's DC on there, and what it looks like is that that's actually discharged through the meter. The worrying thing about that is that if that is true, that is possibility what actually killed the meter in the first place. So nothing on the oscillator at all yet. So now I believe there's another issue and although quite often the electrolytics are usually okay because these are TCCs I am going to replace them but then I had a closer look at one of them. This 25 microfarad capacitor It looks quite bad on either end where it's got, if, it, if the camera will focus, it looks quite um, quite furry. It's uh, basically, it looks like as if the insides have come out. So it's quite probable that that one's also had it. Now, though I do have 27 microfarad capacitors, it's not axial. So it's going to look a little bit silly. So now we see the upright cans now replaced the electrolytic axial capacitors and after replacing those capacitors there was no difference. I noticed you can see in the top of the picture the EL84 which are the two top valves tallest valves I should say have little red lights in them they're the heaters yet the EF86 doesn't. If I turn the light out You can just about make out that three of those valves have got little to no heater activity. Which made me think that still something's wrong there obviously, but something's pulling down the power rail to those uh, valves. Also the EF86 is a high gain valves which would be notably used for inputs. And considering the meter is deflecting to a high uh, level um, most possibly breaking the needle, uh, the meter in the first place, it's a possibility that there's an issue there with the HT and still some one of the transistors 
Oh, sorry, one of the valves, which makes me wonder then. We have three large electrolytic capacitors here. One of those may be faulty. Now it's starting to get a bit late. But considering this machine was completely dead at the beginning of this morning, and I am getting sound replay, that's a huge improvement. I left the machine for a little while, did some other bits and pieces, now I've come back to it. And I decided to meter where the voltage was coming through to the VU meter. Turns out that there was over 70 volts going to it, and this is a probable cause for the meter blowing up. So I tried to see where that was coming from, and I discovered it was going to one of the metal cans. And I assumed then that maybe this was a was one of the electrolytics that had actually gone. But this can is a non-electrolytic. Now these actually make quite a structural impression on the machine. So at the moment the fault is fixed but there's a rather horrible looking you can't really it's not really focusing in on it, but there's a little horrible looking um, capacitor, the yellow one, where the socket where it used, should used to be. So I'm going to recan the capacitor. Now what I do in this instance is I'm going to recan this capacitor. There's two ways of doing it. You can either drill out this top section, pull back this metal flange, or, and I find this being the neatest way, is cut a very thin rim off the top. <laughs> finished yet but you can see what I'm doing here is cutting a very fine ring at the top on which I can peel off and you can get to the inside of the capacitor actually see liquid coming out of the capacitor already. I should be able to pull the top out. There we go. And we can see there is the capacitor. Now it is really really wet and inside the capacitor there is oil. The oil can sometimes cause the capacitor to break down. And if I can just show you there on my finger, it will focus. It's not going to focus, is it? There we go. So you can just see how wet that is. You then take off the top and the bottom of the capacitor. Now with these non-electrolytics, I find the um, unlike the electrolytic ones, the electrolytics have a um, rivet holding the top and the bottom of the transistor on and inside the capacitor that rivet goes onto a piece of like tin foil like aluminium but on the non-electrolytics it's almost as if the capacitor is just soldered either side, the legs just come straight out which is good because then we have a disc with an easy to solder in hole so we can then put the leg of any kind of component through the hole and then solder it. So I'll do the same for this side. And this side needs taking off. Now 
Now what I did there was I just blew the hole through through to the center. It doesn't have to be done as messily as that. We can just um, we can um, uh, use a desoldering tool, but for speed, I've done it that way. So next is a one microfarad capacitor. Just take off the blobs off this one. I've used this in something else and I've recycled them. Actually, just give that a quick wipe out because I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but that is pretty horribly sticky. Isopropanol. Some of the stickiness. Some people will pack these back out again with um, cotton so that the capacitor doesn't rattle around inside. I tend not to bother because I don't tend to have the capacitor rattle inside. So, in all intents and purposes, it looks just like as it should do on that side. New capacitors inside, and then put the top back on, get rid of that. Solder on the other side. Now, obviously, the ring I've cut off can't go back on again, and there is obviously evidence that that's been cut open. But when that goes back in the machine, you're only going to see the top half of it, so you would never know that had been recapped. So now when I put that to direct there's no flick at all. It's not going straight up to maximum because it hasn't got 70 volts going on it. Every so often you see the needle flick however and this seems to be in time with the rotary um, voltage uh, controller or creator, pitch changing, I assume that that's probably picking up noise from that. After replacing two cans, it's now time for the next challenge. Does it record? Well sadly, we've got nothing coming in from the oscillator. That might look like the oscillator is not, it's this oscillator, so we've got no sound. So it's this one above here that's working, not the one below. But does it record? So we've got the sound of the tape. Put it into record mode and find out. No, what a shame. There is no record, although it is erasing the tape. But um, the bias is very low, um, two on the scale, and the neon light has gone out. So although it's raising the tape, the neon's gone out, and in fact actually it's not registering, well there we go, it's registering bias now. So either the bias circuit isn't working properly, which is quite probable because there's still a couple of components to go on this one, as in non-electrolytics, or there's something wrong with the amplifier. So, considering most of the components so far have actually been uh, non-electrolytic capacitors, including when I thought the ones that were um, faulty electrolytics weren't actually curing a fault, 
it's safe to say that the ones inside here, the last, last few on the bias circuit, are probably causing an issue. Now inside the machine, these are going to be tricky to get into, but there's two more non-letrolytic giant cans, one microfarads. Unfortunately tonight I can't do anything else about it because I've run out of Dremel discs. Um, I only had a couple left and uh, as you saw earlier I burned through them pretty quick. So there's those, so I need more Dremel discs and also I need 300 picofarad capacitors. So at the moment there's not much more I can do.